What's up guys, it's Topsy and welcome to the final installment of What If Duel's Kingdom Had a Speed Duel Set. And for today's video, we are talking about none other than Yugi himself. And I feel like it's a fitting character to end the series on. Now then, as for Yugi as a character, there was so much that went into constructing a strategy. Since we've had a lot of his cards already get printed in speed duels, but I think I took an interesting twist as to what exactly I did with his deck specifically. But before we can get started, I would like to ask you guys to please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to see if I can't get this channel to 500 subscribers by the end of the year, and I can't do it without your guys' help. With that being said, thank you very much, and let's get started. Okay then, so here we have Yugi's deck, and one of the things you're going to notice off the rip is that one of the highlighted cards in the deck is Magician of Black Chaos, a card that we've already received in speed duels, but never actually got a good strategy for. If I'm not mistaken, he got printed in one of the booster sets, while BLS got printed in a starter deck, but I might be mistaken the two of them. Nevertheless, I wanted to go ahead and build him a proper strategy for this card in itself, and I think I did a pretty decent job. But before we can break down the strategy in itself, let's go ahead and go over each of the skills that are constructed for Yuki himself. The first skill being Magician of Black Chaos Unleashed. And as you can imagine, this is the skill you're expected to play out of the box, and it's meant to uh, go ahead and uh, synergize with the ace monster of the strategy. So, let's give it a quick read. Once per turn during your main phase, you can discard one card, then add one Magician of Black Chaos or Chaos Form from your deck to your hand. If the card you discarded is Dark Magician, then add one Magician of Black Chaos and Chaos Form from your deck to your hand. Magician of Black Chaos you control gain the following effects while face up on the field. Banish any monster destroyed by battle with this card, and during the end phase, if this card was special summoned this turn, you can target one spell card in your graveyard, add it to your hand. So, let's go ahead and break this skill down. First off, uh, we went ahead and gave this deck a fairly generic ritual spell slash ritual monster searcher. A lot of the ritual strategies get some way, shape, or form of this variant of the skill. One of the ones that comes to mind is the Cyber Angel skill. And typically, these kind of skills are needed in order to make these strategies work. So that's why we made it the way we did. In addition, I went ahead and added a extra caveat where playing cards like Dark Magician, which is one of Yugi's most recognizable ace monsters, benefits you even more because if you discard it, you get to search out both the uh, ritual monster and the ritual spell that coincides with it. And I figured that was an interesting way of doing that as well. This effect is also tied to the Dark Magician because we added Chaos Form as the ritual spell for the deck. And one of the neat things about Chaos Form is that if you were to ritual summon using that card, you can use either Dark Magician or Blue Eyes White Dragon as the material in the graveyard by banishing that card. So I figured that was an interesting way of incorporating that, that ritual spell with the Dark Magician and the uh, Magician of Black Chaos. I thought that was like a really cool and interesting way of doing all that together. Um, in addition, the extra effects that the Magician of Black Chaos has are pretty much meant to reflect its effect monster counterpart. And I feel like for the most part, being able to incorporate this into this monster in itself is a lot uh, more fair than actually giving you the monster in itself. Because Magician of Black Chaos, the, uh, the actual effect monster is pretty strong and pretty easy to, to, uh, to abuse in a uh, condensed format like speed duels. I did try to construct a deck with that monster, but it became a little too powerful. <laughs> so that's why we have it the way we do. And as a whole, I really like the way this skill came out. But give me your thoughts in the comment section below. All right. As for the secondary skill here, we have Symbol of Friendship. All right, let's give it a quick read. If your life points are at a thousand or below, you can reveal all cards in your hand, minimum one, shuffle them all into the deck, and draw the same number of cards, plus one. And essentially what this skill is meant to represent is that moment in the anime where Pegasus throughout the whole duel was looking at Yugi's hand, draw, looking at everything he would draw, and that's why we have the whole revealing aspect of it. But after that, uh, Yugi and the Pharaoh kept on swapping amongst each other to keep Pegasus from being able to look at what he had in, the hand, in his hand at all times. And there's, there's where this whole aspect comes into it as well, where you shuffle everything back into the deck and then draw an extra card, being like a destiny kind of draw. I thought it was like a neat way of incorporating it. Um, having the life point requirement be at a thousand or below seems like a fair way of incorporating this skill. And just getting a plus one seems uh, pretty okay. But I don't know. Give me your thoughts in the comments section below on this one as well. All right then. So now that we know both the skills for Yugi's deck, let's go ahead and actually break down the strategy in itself. Alright, and let's go ahead and begin with the Magician of Black Chaos. I went ahead and decided to give Magician of Black Chaos the uh, the ace monster treatment because in the duel, 
Uh, during Duelist Kingdom, uh, this is the way Yugi ends up beating Pegasus himself with the Magician of Black Chaos. And um, I could have done Black Luster Soldier, but that card was summoned against Mai herself. And I feel like either or could have been fine, but I figured the Magician of Black Chaos had a more significant role in that uh, in that arc. In addition, we also have the Dark Magician. Uh, I feel like <laughs> in every Yugi deck, this card has to be an, almost an auto include. And also, uh, in addition, we do have a way to tie in the Dark Magician with the skill. Uh, not only that, but we also have the Chaos Form in order to tie them all together. So I feel like because of that, the addition of Dark Magician feels pretty okay. All right then, so next up we have the gadgets in themselves, and these might seem like pretty weird choices for a deck, um, especially when you take into consideration that we didn't see them until like way later in the anime. I think that they make the first time they make an appearance is like in the duel of Yugi versus the Pharaoh, which is pretty far from a duelist kingdom. That's like the last arc of the series. But I do have a good reason for including these cards, and the main reason is that I want to go ahead and add monsters to the strategy that were very representative of Yugi as a duelist. And these are one of the choices that made the most sense. For one, the gadgets are really, really good for a ritual based strategy because they're all level fours and upon normal summon, they add each other from the deck to the hand, being great for tribute fodder for a card like Magician of Black Chaos. But in addition, out of the cards that represented Yugi as a duelist, these felt like the best choices, especially because I want to go ahead and save the other ones for a future uh, box idea. So the cards that represented Yugi uh, are pretty much represented via the uh, shiny sarcophagus strategy. Those being cards like uh, Summon Skull, Dark Magician, the Gadgets, Gandora, Marshmallow, uh, the Silent Cards, both Silent Magician and Silent Swordsman. And yeah, these are ca the cards that represent Yugi as a character. And out of all these cards, I felt the most comfortable adding the gadgets. And I wanted to go ahead and save the Silent Magician and the Silent Swordsman for another strategy. Summon Skull seems a bit weird in this strategy as well because it wouldn't be doing all that much. And we already have Dark Magician in here, which is a card that represents both Yugi and the Pharaoh. While Marshmallow, I didn't love the idea of this card just being able to burn your opponent for a thousand when it's attacked. That seems a bit, eh, I don't know, it, it feels not great. And that's why I landed on the gadgets themselves. In addition, as I said, uh, these are great for the ritual based strategy and they just make a lot of sense in here as well. That's why I really, really like them. And I feel like for the most part, they can be fairly balanced and they can just create a whole strategy in their own. So I like them a lot. They're really, really cool additions to the game. Moving on, we also have Electric Magnetic Turtle. Uh, one of the cards that Yugi did use during this arc was uh, Catapult Turtle. And we can't really add Catapult Turtle into the deck just because it wouldn't do anything and it's just kind of like a bad card that's mostly just used for burning your opponent. So why not use Electric Magnetic Turtle which actually serves a purpose while it's in the graveyard which ties into the whole ritual aspect of the strategy. And you know what I, I kind of just like it being here as a way to represent that card. Moving down some more we have Sangan and Sangan is one of those cards that feels a bit powerful but Given that it uh, already has an errata and it's the weaker version of, uh, of Witch of the Black Forest, I feel like it's okay. During the duel against Kaiba in the beginning of the, uh, I think it's like episode 1, Yugi, you can see this is one of the cards that Yugi has in his deck and that deck he used against Kaiba is the same deck that he used for Duelist Kingdom. So I feel like this is a good way to add Sangan into the game. Moving down some more, we have Karibo and let's see, Skilled Brown Magician. So. Out of all the skilled magicians we have in the game, um, I think this is the only one we're currently missing. And as far as the skilled cards go, this, this one's fine. That's not going to break anything in the game. Um, and it works really well with Karibo. Um, Karibo is really cool because against Kaiba in the anime, he ends up using Multiply with Karibo to create like a whole wall to prevent himself from losing. And it's kind of cool uh, to represent that aspect of the uh, of the arc. Um, and in addition, the uh, skilled brand magician is meant to go ahead and help with the Karibo and to add the multiply as well, a card that we haven't received in the game uh, yet, which is weird. Uh, really cool and interesting card. And skilled brand magician is really good because it can either add you the Karibo or multiply from your deck to your hand, and it's kind of neat. All right then, and last monster of the deck is Manju of the Ten Thousand Hands, a really really good piece of ritual support just because it's able to add you the ritual spell or the ritual monster on normal summon. I feel like the speed duels has progressed to the point where we can add a card like Manju into the format without it being like absolutely broken. 
if not this, then we could have just added uh, either Sonic Bird or Senju instead. But I feel like Manju would, would be fine. And again, it's a ritual based strategy and ritual strategies. If you're not Cyber Angel, you're, you're struggling as a ritual based strategy. Let's just face it. So yeah, this is the monster lineup. As you can see, it's very Yugi and Pharaoh centric. Like the deck represents a lot of the cards that they used in the anime while still tying into the whole aspect of ritual summoning. So I feel like as a whole, it feels really, really cool. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention that because Karibo and uh, Dark Magician are both level 7 and level 1, they can also make the Magician of Black Chaos, which is kind of neat. With the combination of almost every any monster in the deck, you can make the Magician of Black Chaos. The only exception is the Sangen, which is meant to go ahead and search out the gadgets themselves to get your engine started. So that's kind of cool. Or the Manju. Alright then, so now that we have all the monsters down, let's move on to the spell cards. Starting off with Book of Moon. It's just a generically good spell card that can be added off the effect that we have for the skill off the Magician of Black Chaos, so that's why we have it here. Uh, next card up is the Bell Shattering Arrow. We need some form of card to go ahead and remove back row, and this is one of the cards that Yugi used in the anime. The card did pretty much anything but destroy back row, but it's another way to go ahead and pay homage one more time to the anime in itself. So that's why we have it here. Uh, moving down some more, of course, we have the Chaos Form. We already mentioned how it's the way to go and incorporate the Dark Magician with the Magician of Black Chaos as well. So that's why it's here. We have the Magician of Black Chaos's uh, signature card in Chaos Scepter Blast, which is a really, really cool card, which just lets you banish a card on the field. Next up, we have Multiply. It's searchable off the effect of Brown, uh, Skilled Brown Magician, and it works with Karibo. So that's why we have it here. And again, as I already mentioned, it's meant to represent that uh, one uh, scene from the anime. Moving down some more, we also have Mystic Box, a really cool card that I'm surprised we haven't gotten into the game yet. And again, it's another card that Yugi used during the anime. Um, he specifically used it against uh, Pegasus to take his uh, Jiku Bag... Uh, <laughs> that little little Bakugan looking card. And lastly, we have Source of Revealing Light, a card that is very, very powerful, but we already know is going to get printed in the Battle City final set. So we'll add it here because it's another card that Yugi uses as well in the anime. And that is the spell card lineup. As a whole, I like it a lot. Uh, we have a lot of interesting choices for cards that are iconic to Yugi but have never been printed. And in addition, cards that go ahead and synergize with the Magician of Black Chaos who are being really good targets off the effect to add a spell card from the graveyard to the hand. One of the cards that I did consider adding was Brain Control, but honestly, I don't love the idea of adding a card like this into the format because I feel like it'd be more problematic than anything else. And I don't know, maybe we're at a point where we could add this, but I don't think so. So that's the main reason it's not here. It would have been a great choice because this is another card that made an appearance in the anime multiple times actually and it would have been really cool to add but i don't know uh, it seems a wee bit too strong all right then so let's go ahead and wrap up with the trap cards now first one up is horn of heaven another card that he used in the duelist kingdom arc specifically against bakora in their like little virtual game style duel where uh, all the guys are like represented via the monsters on field so i kind of think it's a cool addition into the game and kind of fair honestly uh, moving on, we have Jar of Avarice. This is mostly here because uh, as ritual strategies go, they are very uh, taxing on how much uh, resources you need in order to summon these monsters. So a card like Jar of Avarice allows you to recycle cards like the gadgets, uh, maybe some spell cards you want to reuse, maybe the Manju or the Sangan. I feel like as a whole, this card kind of just works really well because you're going to go through your resources real quick in this deck. And last trap card up is Magical Hats. Again, really iconic Yugi card. And honestly, filling up the graveyard with your spell and trap cards isn't that bad because we have the Jar of Avarice and or the Magician of Black Chaos that can recover them off the its own effect. So that's why it's here. And again, very, uh, very iconic card from the anime as well. And it made an appearance during the Duelist Kingdom. Um, one of the trap cards that didn't quite make the cut was Shift. It would have been a cool card to you add into the deck as well. We could have probably replaced it with the Jar of Avarice, but I think Jar of Avarice worked way, way too well in this deck. Again, it's a card that Yugi used during the anime as well, but I don't know, it's it's too gibbicky. Um, it's it's cute, uh, but we could have added it, but I decided not to. One other card that didn't quite make the cut was Breaker, just because it's a generically good card, and I feel like it's been overprinted at this point, and we I preferred some more fresher options as the ones you can see here. But yeah, guys, that's Yugi's deck. Um, this is a really, really cool strategy that I love a lot. The addition of the gadgets feels really cool, even though it's not of the same arc. I feel like as a representative card of Yugi, they work really, really well. But give me your guys' thoughts, uh, all your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. I love reading all your guys' comments and I love interacting with you guys as well. 
Also, if you guys are interested at all in using any of the custom skills or deck lists I've made for this series, then all you have to do is look up Topsy Turnip in the description below of Dueling Book, uh, put in all custom cards, and it should give you all my skills that I've made for this series. And of course, if you want to go ahead and have the deck list, uh, just click on any of the videos and you'll see all every single card that I use for the uh, for the deck. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I had a ton of fun creating this custom box and some of you guys have suggested in the comment section for me to make a part two with some of the characters you guys would have liked uh, to see in this box. So if that's one of you guys, uh, leave in the comment section below what characters would you like if I were to make a part two. If I did make a part two, it'd probably be like a mini box, so it'd only include four characters. So let me know in the comment section, what characters would you like to see for a potential part two of Duelist Kingdom? All right, with all that being said, guys, thank you so much. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe so you never miss another video of mine. All right, guys, have a wonderful day and I'll see you all around. Bye.